Hey guys, Erpel Eeple here. I just wanted to give you a tutorial on how I make my more kind of glidey, sexy pads in my songs. So I actually use Renoise for my pads and usually I rewire it into Ableton and I'll do my drums in Ableton and sometimes I'll rewire both of those into Logic. So it sort of just depends on the song. But here's a very early work in progress. Only really put maybe an hour or two into this, but um, I liked the way the pads were coming out and especially their, uh, the progression of the pads. So I thought I would show you how I do all the gliding and stuff. So I'll just play you a bit of this, what I'm working on. All right. Can you fill me in? So if we just solo the pads here. It's basically the pattern. And um, just in case you wanted to know, I made this pad just from, it was a sample off of an electron SID station. And then, you can kind of just see how I'm looping a uh, tail of the wave here. And it's going through a bunch of effects. So this is what it's like dry. So if we look at the progression here, the way this works, if you're not familiar with uh, Renoise, is these are note lanes. And if I have an in instrument selected, like I, I called this thing, uh, I called this pad thing. Uh, that's my in instrument name. Then when I type on my keyboard, I can input um, the notes. I could also do this with a full MIDI keyboard. You could do it with a computer keyboard. But um, so I've inputted here, you can see it's a C3, okay? And here's a D sharp three, and here's a G3, okay? That's the first two parts. Uh, or the first little part, and that's just the note value. Now the second part you can see here says zero, 03. And so if we look down here in an instrument editor, we have zero, 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 one, zero, 002, and where are we at? We are at zero, 03. Um, so it'll automatically just put this in for you. So if I go into uh, edit mode by pressing escape, and I, um, you know, I just play to C4, it automatically put it in because I have that instrument selected, it's gonna play it off that instrument and put it into a note lane. So, um, I can expand to have multiple note lanes, uh, and the quicker way to do it too is just to hold shift and then play the chord and it'll automatically create the amount of, amount of note lanes that you need. But what is really unique about Renoise and, uh, why I think it can do this better than any other program is that because of its tracker approach, um, each note lane is independent. And in fact, I have even, uh, if I click the effects button down here, I even have independent effects control. This is an effects lane right here uh, for each note lane. So I could even have each note glide differently. So the reason why this is different is, is that in most synthesizers, there is some sort of a glide function, but all it really does is it sort of, you know, slides the notes around haphazardly. In the case of Renoise, I can tell it, okay, here I'm playing a, a C minor triad. I have C, I have, uh, uh, it says D sharp, I prefer to think of that as E flat. So I have C, E flat, and a G. And then that's gonna go to an F minor triad where I have uh, F, A flat, and then C. And so what I'm doing here is I'm telling it that I want the C to go to the F, the D sharp to go to the G sharp, the G to go to the C. And what's gonna happen is when Renoise gets to this line, it sees that I've issued it a glide command. That's what this G is, okay? And if you see at the right here, what does three zero mean? Well, to simplify it, because I don't wanna go into a whole lesson on the hexadecimal, but to simplify it, uh, 30 means uh, three semitones. So three notes. So uh, on the first 
um, value here, I want it to go three notes and then two notes. So that's a total of five semitones away, which is how far away uh, F minor triad is from uh, a C minor triad, okay? So it's basically, it's gonna go that fast. And so I want it to go, I'm kind of having it escalate. So quicker at first and then, and then slower. So almost like an outward exponential curve. And just so you know, so it doesn't confuse you, what are these Vs? That's vibrato, so I'm programming um, a, a certain amount of vibrato at the end of those notes. And so what I'm doing here is the pattern goes from that C minor to an F very fast immediately. You can see here that actually what's happening is I'm gliding back down to the C from the F, okay? And, and then immediately back up to the F. So it kind of does a thing. And then I do it again, going back down to the C, but this time I'm going up to the G. So if you notice the G is seven, seven semitones away, so I'm gliding up seven instantaneously. Um, these off commands are note off commands, so I want the note to terminate there. I don't want it to kind of keep going. I want to have a, a bit of silence and some of the reverb tail leading out, but that's the essence of it. The only other commands I kind of uh, am using here that are interesting is um, uh, pitch up and pitch down. So those are sort of, um, rather than glide where I'm able to glide, you know, and I could, by the way, glide from like a minor chord to a major chord. I could glide from any chord to any chord because all that it cares about is that, for instance, this G sharp is gliding to this D sharp and this F is gliding to this C. So I could do really complex chord slides, which is, you know, something you can't do in any other DAW on the planet. So um, if I come down here, what this is, is this is a little different. I wouldn't be able to glide from one type of chord to a completely different type of chord. This is a simple pitch up command. So uh, C, um, if I pitch up to a value of C, uh, it's hexadecimal, so that means a value of 12, which is an entire octave. Um, so in hexadecimal, you have 0 through 9 and then A through F. So if you count it up 0 to 9, then A would be your 10, B would be 11, and C would be 12. So I'm pitching up an octave, and here I'm pitching down an octave. So if you listen to those, those are just quick little immediate pitch bends. And that, you know, gets kind of kind of cool sounding on those. So that's really the essence of it. And, um, you know, these are super useful. Uh, I love Renoise for its glide functionality primarily. You can hear it here in the, in the bass pattern that I'm doing the same thing. I'm gliding um, down an octave uh, and I'm doing it over two notes. Now, theoretically, I probably could have just used the... Um, the pitch bend down sample twice, uh, you know, uh, D60, D60 instead of G60, G60 with a note value, but uh, that's just the way I decided to do it. And here's a later glide as well. It's just doing a whole um, octave down. So that's, I like that a lot. I like it because it's very quick. Uh, even just doing the pitch bend stuff, um, you can apply it all kinds of places. For instance, here in the kick line, you can see that I do a, a little pitch up with a beat repeat. You can hear it kind of for a moment there, kind of going up. So, um, yeah, you know what? Get it. Try it out. Try out Renoise. You can rewire it into Ableton. It's super easy to do, um, and you can use both simultaneously. And a cool thing is usually when you're rewiring, the rewire slave doesn't let you use plugins. But for some reason, if you rewire Renoise, it doesn't matter if it's the slave. It'll still let you use plugins, so you can use plugins in both DAWs, um, and that is really cool. All right. I hope you guys got something out of this. Have a good one.